Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Dalhousie University's fall 2022 graduating classes uh, from the faculties of Arts and Social Sciences, Faculty of Computer Science, the Schulich School of Law and the Faculty of Graduate Studies. My name is Frank Harvey, and it is my distinct honor and privilege to be serving as Dalhousie's Provost and Vice President Academic, and I will be serving as your MC for today's ceremony. I'd like to begin uh, the ceremony today by asking Elder Anne Labilua to deliver the traditional Mi'kmaq welcome. Ngwe, good morning. How are you this morning? Welly Exigbu. It's a fine day and congratulations. Congratulations, students. Being a student myself, I've discovered how hard blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> that are made and used to get through. And congratulations, my goodness. I'd like to welcome you to the Mi'kma'ki, the land of the Mi'kma'ki, and to the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq land, the Mi'kmaq people. It's such an honor 
because my ancestors have welcomed all the ancestors that they had ever met. They always welcomed all the ancestors. So with every breath that you take, continue growing as you have been, continue encouraging each other, and continue to make the world brighter. For the future looks very bright as you leave here. Wallowian. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder Libidwa, for that beautiful welcome. I would also like to acknowledge that Dalhousie University and our community benefit from and sit on Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We are very grateful for our partnerships and our friendships across Dalhousie's campuses, our faculties, and our administrative units. We are grateful for our elders, past, present, and emerging, our elders and residents, grateful for our community leaders, our Indigenous Advisory Council, our Director of Indigenous Community Engagement, Catherine Martin, Indigenous Student Center, Indigenous Research Facilitator in the VP Research Office, Indigenous Health Programs, inclusive pathways to the medical professions, our Indigenous Student Access Pathways on the Truro campus, and many other critically important initiatives and partnerships across our campuses. We will continue to work on and build on these important relationships and friendships because we are all treaty people and we take these words and our commitment to truth and reconciliation very seriously. <clears throat> we would also like to acknowledge the histories, the contributions and the legacies of the African Nova Scotian people and communities who have been here for over 400 years. We are grateful for our African Nova Scotian Advisory Council, our Director of African Nova Scotian Community Engagement, and our pathways into our Truro campus programs. I am sure all of our graduating students today have many, many fond memories of your time at Dalhousie, and I should add that we have many King students who are graduating uh, with us today, and I'd like to acknowledge their presence here. There are two times, specific times, on a university campus that are particularly significant. The first, of course, is at the start of every term when we welcome our new students to campus. The second is at the end of their program when we come together as we are today, fortunately in person, to celebrate the completion of your degree. For many, this day very likely comes with a range of different emotions, sadness, at leaving behind a community and many close friends. Perhaps eagerness to move on from Dalhousie, uh, to begin a new job or another program of study, possibly a little fear and anxiety for those who aren't sure what is next. And certainly, I hope, gratitude for all those who supported you along the way. But abo above all, I hope you feel pride. You've done what many people only dream of and you should be incredibly proud of your accomplishment. Completing your degree, particularly in these unique circumstances of a two-year-long pandemic, certainly gives us all many reasons to be so proud of what you've accomplished. Convocation marks the culmination of years of very, very hard work, and your hard work deserves to be formally acknowledged and recognized and celebrated in Convocation. Throughout the completion of your degree, you've spent hundreds of hours in classes, tutorials, labs. You've read thousands of pages from books and journal articles and research reports. You've written and studied hundreds of pages of notes that you've extracted from uh, those classes and books and research reports, tutorials, and labs. You found time to be student leaders in societies, athletics, extracurricular activities. You've completed hundreds of exams and quizzes and midterms and finals. Our FAST students drafted hundreds of pages of essays, reports and other projects, practiced and delivered dozens of presentations, many for online audiences. Some of you participated in the production of theater and music performances, uh, both on stage and online. You've experienced new cultures uh, and many had many conversations with peers and professors in second and possibly third languages and you've engaged in local groups and organizations and earned valuable work experience through experiential learning opportunities. 
Our computer science students solved thousands of problems, debugged endless lines of code, and mastered many new languages and systems. You've designed and created hundreds of user interfaces and working software systems. You've demoed dozens of personal and team projects, and you've mastered concepts from fields as diverse as human computer interaction and artificial intelligence. And many of you completed at least three co-op terms. Our law students completed numerous moots in the Weldon Law tradition of unselfish public service and working uh, with many uh, in our community and with community partners. You've contributed your time and energy to our pro bono uh, community service projects. You've, taken, you've um, taken advantage of summer internship opportunities. Many of you have gained valuable work experience in internship placements across Canada and abroad. And working with our legal aid uh, and technology clinics, you've provided basic legal information and advice to members of our community, and you've consumed lots of coffee from the student lounge and may have attended a few DOMUS events. And all of you, uh, all of our graduates today, have made many, many great friends. But you've also completed your respective degrees uh, by spending a good part of your time balancing school and work and social lives. You've been dealing with fears and anxieties about your programs and your future. You've been dealing with relationships and social pressures. Many of you uh, are managing budgets and in many cases completed your degree by juggling one, sometimes two, possibly even three jobs to cover tuition. And I am sure you dealt with personal and emotional crises and losses, perhaps losses tied to the pandemic. Your graduation speaks volumes about your capacity and your willingness to succeed anywhere by applying the life lessons, the skills, the knowledge, the passions, and the life choices that you've lived through while completing your degrees. These are all the reasons that we're celebrating today. These are all the reasons your family and friends in our entire Dalhousie community are so incredibly proud of you. These are the reasons you inspire us. So feel free to make some noise. Congratulations. Family and friends, although we would typically encourage you to um, move around the auditorium and take as many pictures as you would like for health and safety reasons, we'll ask if you can possibly stay seated, take as many pictures as you would like. Feel free to share those photos through hashtag DowGrad. Convocation is also being webcast, so you can share the uh, ceremony through the link on our website. What I'd like to do now is take a moment to introduce those individuals who will be participating, uh, formally participating in our ceremony today. And when I call your name, if you can please stand and remain standing uh, if you are able. Um, Elder Anne Lebilloa, who gave the beautiful traditional Mi'kmaq welcome a few moments ago. Dr. Deep Saini, President and Vice Chancellor. <laughs> William Leahy, President and Vice Chancellor of the University of King's College. <laughs> Dr. Louise Spiteri, Chair of Dalhousie Senate. <laughs> Dr. Jennifer Andrews, Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Dr. Andrew Rao Chaplin, Dean of the Faculty of Computer Science. <laughs> Camille Cameron, Dean of the Schulich School of Law. <laughs> Dr. Estelle Joubert, Assistant Dean of PhD Strategy in the Faculty of Graduate Studies. <laughs> Elder Catherine Martin, our Director of Indigenous Community Engagement. Dr. Lisa Binkley, the 2022 recipient of the Award of Excellence, the Award for Excellence in Education for Diversity, who carried the New Dawn staff in with the students today. And of course, David Ainsley Woods, our honorary degree recipient.
Also on the platform party today and in the audience are uh, so many others who have contributed uh, uh, to your success. These include numerous faculty members, staff, administrators, your associate deans, your VPs, many others who are all so critical to the success of our students and to the academic excellence of our programs. Can you all please stand? Your platform party for today. Huh? Thank you very much. Please be seated. Thank you. Can I please ask, uh, ask you all to turn the sound off on your phones? Please don't worry about turning the sound off of your children. Those are beautiful sounds. Don't worry about them. We welcome them. Um, I would now like to invite Dr. Deep Saini to deliver the president's remarks on this wonderful occasion. Thank you, Dr. Harvey, distinguished guests, families and friends, the platform party, and of course, most importantly, graduates. What an honor it is today to be standing in front of you, and what an immense pleasure it is to celebrate with you this very well-deserved milestone when you transition from being a student to being an alumnus. The class of 2022, you completed your studies in extraordinary times. Although it may feel like we are close to a return to the normal, the most of you, I believe, know that almost half of your studies were completed during the pandemic. That's quite an ordeal to go through. So today, we are cele celebrating your perseverance your resilience, your grit, your determination, and all that you have achieved by rising to the challenges that were thrown at you incessantly day after day throughout your university journey. That makes you totally awesome in my eyes. So ladies and gentlemen, Let's put our hands together for this awesome group of people who have done this all. <laughs> this milestone at which you are today is very well earned, and it is a source of great pride both for you and also for your supporters. You didn't have it easy, but I dare to imagine that someday you will look back and realize, and that is if you don't already realize so, that completing your degree in such extraordinary times made you stronger, perhaps it made you more resilient, more creative, more innovative, more empathetic, more civic-minded, and more conscious of how the actions of one impact many, and of course, more committed to striving for a better world. And these are exactly the traits that our world needs right now. I, I hate to speak about this at a moment of celebration, but uh, I want to remind all of us that although we may be emerging from the pandemic, our societies are still facing a confluence of daunting, wicked challenges. These include the climate change crisis, of course, that is all too real now. The urgent need to recognize and to address historical injustices. The global public health challenges, notwithstanding the improvement that has happened in the state of the pandemic. The need to feed a projected population of 9 billion people on this planet without, of course, destroying this planet through our interventions in the environment. And this group should particularly be aware of this, especially those from Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. The challenges to democracy, peace, and global order that we are facing every day these days. So the task in front of you today's graduates is not an easy one. And it will indeed demand a great deal of you. But amidst all the uncertainties, all the challenges, 
there are unparalleled opportunities to be seized. So in my opinion, in some ways, we are at the cusp of the greatest creative destruction that has happened in our societies in our lifetimes, at least. So there are opportunities to seize. But to seize these opportunities, you will have to be willing to take chances and risks. And I often look back at my own life, which started in a very, very humble place. And I realized that some of the greatest opportunities in my own life have come my way because I was willing to take a chance and take a risk. I'm not going to bore you with all the stories of my risks and chances, but uh, I would uh, say that if you ever have trouble sleeping, just look me up. We'll talk. <laughs> Your generation has demonstrated again and again that you have what it takes to overcome extreme circumstances. When I see what you have overcome in order to get to this point, and especially when I think about what you have become as a result of that experience, I feel totally confident, totally confident that you have what it takes and you're totally up to the task and the world is in very, very competent and safe hands. Your university education had trained you to ask critical questions and make decisions based on evidence. And let me stress that again, based on evidence, not on unsubstantiated opinions. These are powerful tools and a great responsibility as well in a world that is full of people seeking to impose their opinions on the evidence. Exercise this responsibility, and responsibility it is. Exercise it with confidence and courage as you step into the world and as you step in to lead the world, as in fact, in my view, you have already started doing in small baby steps. Today, we also celebrate, in addition to your graduation, your membership in Dalhousie's worldwide community of more than 155,000 alumni. This is a very distinguished group of people that has, in fact, already left an indelible mark on societies around the world. I have no doubt that you will uphold this tradition with distinction and that the years to come will see you too achieving great things, but great things not just for yourselves, great things for this world. By attending today's ceremony, you are recognizing and celebrating the investment you have made in your education. Now we are with you on that one. We take this very seriously. So we are committed to continue to raise our ambitions at Dalhousie and continue to raise Dalhousie in the order of the academic world. And in doing so, we are committed to ensuring that the value of your de degree, this testament that you are about to receive, keeps on appreciating over time. As your institution rises, as your alma mater rises, so does the value of your degree. You, our graduates and alumni, are the greatest source of pride and joy for us. So on behalf of Dalhousie University, please accept my heartfelt congratulations. Thank you for celebrating with us today, and please keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chancellor Saini. Mr. Vice Chancellor, graduates, please rise. Mr. Vice Chancellor, as chair of the, the Senate of Dalhousie University, I ask you to confer degrees upon those candidates whose names have been approved by Senate. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in Dalhousie University, I admit to their respective degrees and diplomas with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining to their two, those candidates who have fulfilled the requirements of that degree and whose names have been approved by Senate. Admito vos ad gradum.
Graduates, please be seated. I now call upon Dr. Jennifer Andrews, Dean of the Faculty of the Arts, sorry, the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, Dr. Andrew Rao Chaplin, Dean of the Faculty of Computer Science, and Dr. Estelle Joubert, Assistant Dean with the Faculty of Graduate Studies, and Olivier Blais, an order and alum from the Fountain School of Performing Arts, to present the candidates who are here today receiving degrees. Mr. Vice Chancellor, as Dean, I am pleased to be here today to celebrate the accomplishments of candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for degrees within the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the following candidates are here today from the University of King's College to receive the Bachelor of Arts. Juliette Burchell with honors in both political science and French, first class honors. Andrew Patrick French with honors in both contemporary studies and history. Megan Maureen Caroline Krempa with honors in history of science and technology and philosophy, first class honors. <laughs> Kathleen Lynn McKenna. Evan Connor Murray with honors in political science. <laughs> Khalil Justin Tuff, double major in sociology and social anthropology and international development studies. Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates from the University of King's College who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Arts. The following. <laughs> the following candidate is here today from the University of King's College to receive the Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Liam Thomas Taylor, double major in computer science and statistics. Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates from the University of King's College who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Science. The following candidates with the Faculty of Arts and Social Science are here today to receive the Bachelor of Arts. Benjamin Clifford Barnes with honors in both social anthropology and history with first class honors. Alexandra Sarah Belitsky with honors in both political science and psychology with distinction. <laughs> Wynne Ann Rose Clark Squire, double major in gender and women's studies and creative writing with distinction. Marin Elizabeth Hamilton with honors in political science, first class honors. <laughs> Tobias James Lawrence, major in political science. <laughs> Ha-Yen Liu, major in political science and economics.
Rene Don Mary McKay, major in sociolo sociology and social anthropology. Israel Rees Maynard, double major in environment, sustainability, society and sociology, and social anthropology. <laughs> Paige Elizabeth Ruffley, major in international development studies. King Tang. <laughs> Tana Tanjila with honors in international development studies, first class honors. <laughs> Blade Dawson Turner. Alex Joseph Walsh, major in English. <clears throat> Emma Beatrice Ward. <clears throat> Vishal Sharma. Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Arts. The following candidate is, yes, applause, go ahead. The following candidate is here today to receive the Bachelor of Music, Javier Molali. Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of the candidate who is here today to receive the Bachelor of Music. Mr. Vice Chancellor, as Dean, I am pleased to be here today to celebrate the accomplishments of candidates who fulfill the requirements for degrees within the Faculty of Computer Science. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science. Cameron Luke Copland. <laughs> Ho Chi Tsui. <laughs> Tai Fentinko. Alexander Furlot, uh, Cooperative Program. <laughs> Corey Jacob Powell Hosberg. <laughs> Liam Andrew Moore, Cooperative Program. Nathan Ronald Patterson.
Nok Song Ha Fo, Cooperative Program Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Bachelor of Computer Science. Aminu Saleh Abdullahi. <laughs> Atira Afwina, Cooperative Program, Sexton Distinction. Labib Ahmed, Cooperative Program. <laughs> Mohammad Abdul Rahman Bajanaid, Cooperative Program. Netra Balkumar, Cooperative Program, Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Anaik Elizabeth Chakon, Cooperative Program. Tim Chan, Cooperative Program. James Chisholm, Cooperative Program. Dylan Connors, Cooperative Program. Yin Hao Chui. <laughs> Ahmed El Kadi, Cooperative Program. <laughs> Jordan Alexa Dion Finner. Connor Angus French. <laughs> Joshua Fung, Corporate Program Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Jahao Gao, with honors, first class honors. Ron Robientalo Gonzalez, Cooperative Program, Sexton Distinction. Pranav <laughs> Goyal, with honors, first class honors. Olivia Hanspiker, Cooperative Program. <laughs> Colton Hingley, Cooperative Program. Ryan Hong, a cooperative program with distinction. Yeah. 
Lydia Isjan Insense, Corporative Program, Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Zaida Islam, Corporative Program. Jasmine Kaur, Cooperative Program. Shardul Samir Kavali, Cooperative Program. Asad Kothawala. Francois Chanter Levert, Cooperative Program, Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Ellen Courtney Lewis, Cooperative Program, Distinction. Howard Loan, Cooperative Program. <laughs> Lohit Sritej Madhala, Cooperative Program with Distinction. <laughs> Farmidul Mala, Cooperative Program. Kevin Christopher Mercer, Cooperative Program. <laughs> Edwin Daniel Penelo Cullen, Cooperative Program with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Keith Michael Pineo. Joel Richards, Corporative Program, Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Arjit Singh. <laughs> Liam Marcus Cruz So, Corporative Program, Sexton Distinction. Khalil Ibrahim Tarabulsi, Cooperative Program. <laughs> Justin Garrett Timmins. <laughs> Keegan Ennis Tullock, Cooperative Program. Jingli Wong. <laughs> Carson David Lee Weaver, Cooperative Program with Distinction. <laughs> Min Hang Wu. Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Computer Science. Mr. Vice Chancellor, Anytime. 
<laughs> As the system dean, I am pleased to be here today to celebrate the accomplishments of candidates who have fulfilled their requirements for degrees within the Faculty of Graduate Studies. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Master of Applied Computer Science. Anamika Ahmed. Dinesh Kumar Balaji Jyoti. Abimbola Margaret Babalola. Aditya Bakshi. Shiva Mitesh Kumar Bharat. Arpa Nayam Kumar Bhatt. Harsh Samir Bhai Bhatt. Anjali Shodari. <laughs> Namid Prakash Tadlani. <laughs> Vishnu Sumant. Janesh Katan Desai. <laughs> Simrambanu Rashansha Diwan. <laughs> Dove Doshi. Azif Fezal. <laughs> Param Gaikwad. Arun Kumar Subhash Goda. <laughs> Jaspreet Kaur Gail. Nile Jahambarte Goswami. <laughs> Monisha J. <laughs> Hidampreet Singh Jagi. Aditya Jain. <laughs> Vishal Rakesh Jaswal. <laughs> 
Akshit Kishore Kumar Jariwala. Sai Vaishnavi Jupudi. Kisha Monhambai Kaundaria. Gunish Qatar. <laughs> Venkata Saikaran Katakola. Sai Rahul Kodamuru. Rishita Kotial. Amrita Krishna. Yashvi Ketan Lad <laughs> Nadish Maridia <laughs> Sanket Ushangbai Meta. Kushang Arumbai Mystery Vishvesh Naik Eklavia Nutyal Dhruv Mukeshbai Oja. <laughs> Nachiket Nirajambai Panchal. <laughs> Priti Sri Pandi. Rartana Barma Jay Patel Rushikesh Pravimbal Patil Sartak Navin Chandra Patil Utkar Schnellisbay Patil Harit Patwa Rahul Reddy Pushakalia (מח) 
Samir Rana. Samiksha Salgankar. Kurlin Kaur Saluja. Hinal Sapovadia. Diksha Sarin. Priya Arun Kumar Savalia. <laughs> Drumil Shah. <laughs> Drumil Amish Shah. Jainam Rakesh Kumar Shah. Vira Chigar Shah. Adil Sadiq Mohamed Shaikh. Nenat Arvinder Singh Devraj Singh Harjot Singh. Majinder Singh. Mangraj Singh. Krishan Tankar. <laughs> Sumajor Vadiola. <laughs> Aishna Verma. Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Master of Applied Computer Science. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Master of Arts. Lisa Mary Elizabeth Bauer in History. Marisa Lauren Carroll in English. <laughs> Catherine Ann Charlton in History. <laughs> Ali
Alice Elizabeth Kraft in political science. Aidan Donald Joseph Sear in Classics. Christopher Davis George in Sociology. Holly Haynes in history. Connor Winfred Thomas Hubley in history. Faiza Imam in international development studies. Amberlyn Laurie in history. Manaf Mansour in international development studies. Caroline Ann Milner in sociology. Jeremy Tom Spronk in history. Katya Stapleton in English. Catherine Mary Sutherland Hartling in philosophy. Hewitt Tedes in history. Bahar Tunk in political science. Alyssa Mava Walsh in political science. Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Master of Arts. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Master of Computer Science. <laughs> Anirudh Ganesh. Harsh Manohar Gawai <laughs> Mohammed Muzamil H. Ramanpreet Kaur. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Master of Computer Science. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Master of Digital Innovation. <laughs> Asma Ahmed. <laughs> A 
Amy Melinda Graham. Mr. Chan Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Master of Digital Innovation. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Master of Laws. Rukayat Opeyemi Ibrahim. <laughs> Chemaka Cynthia Ikanibi. Victoria Ann Congatz. <laughs> Morris Kingsley O'Day. <laughs> Haruna Keba Soe. Vaishali <laughs> Elizabeth Miriam Zahpa Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of those candidates who are here today to receive the Master of Laws. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the degree of Doctor of Philosophy is the highest earned degree awarded by the, by, the, by the university, and as such re re represents the culmination of the candidate's educational achievement. I am pleased to present to you the following candidates who, through thesis and examination, have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Mr. Vice Chancellor, the awarding of the PhD degree completes a long cooperation between the student and their thesis advisor. We are pleased in the ceremony to also recognize the supervisor of the doctoral candidate, and we ask the supervisor to stand and present the parchment to the graduate following hooding. Following the, the awarding of the degree, our newest PhD graduates are asked to join the faculty on stage. Hola <laughs> diura eyeyemi eyitayo oyasode. In law, <laughs> supervised by Kim Brooks. Kayla Bernice Hurtle in English, supervised by Dr. Julia M. Wright. Uh, Akinwumi Olawuyi Oguranti in law, supervised by Sarah Seik.
Ogbu Okanga Okanga in law supervised by Kim Brooks. Jeremy Graham Porter in computer science, supervised by Dick Dirk Arnold. Sarah Perry Belize Sevgur in Philosophy of Sociology, supervised by Pauline Gardiner Barber. Mr. Vice Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Can I please ask for a round of applause for our amazing order, Olivier Blais. Please join me once again in congratulating all of our graduates today. I would now like to call attention to the families and friends of our graduates. Uh, we know that convocation is an important occasion for you as well. And I am sure that all of us understand and recognize the importance uh, of your role uh, the importance of your love and support along the way. So we would like to express our gratitude to you for the role that you played. Can I ask the graduates to please stand and please the onstage party as well? Graduates, your family and friends have been applauding you loudly throughout our convocation ceremony today. Now it is your turn and our turn to make some noise in honor of them for their support. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. Conferring of an honorary doctorate degree is the highest honor our university bestows. I now call upon Dr. Louise Pteri, Chair of Senate, to present the candidate for the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. To call David Woods simply an artist is far too reductive. We could unspool that term to specify his many modes of artistic creation. Poetry, acting, directing, playwriting, painting, even quilting. And that would still feel like an insufficient summary of his contributions. He is researcher. He is a community builder. He pictures possibility in all theaters of society and through color and collaboration, conjures it into existence. Writes nominator, Dr. Afua Cooper, David has changed the cultural and artistic landscape in Nova Scotia 
through his untiring efforts and his unmatched generosity to center the voices of African Nova Scotians in artistic practices and institutions. Today, we are proud to present Mr. Woods with his first honorary degree. Born in Trinidad, Mr. Woods emigrated to Dartmouth, Nova Scotia when he was a teenager. His diverse, multidisciplinary skills as an artist are largely self-taught, but his educational journey did pass through Dowd's campus walls, earning his BA in political science in 1981. Ever since, his life's work has progressed down to complementary paths, developing his own artistic voice and creating the space and capacity for others to share the voices. Mr. Woods has mounted plays on diverse stages across Canada and beyond, read his poetry across the world, exhibited his paintings in provincial and national galleries, and published award-winning books. His creations and performances have frequently touched upon essential stories of the African Nova Scotian and African Canadian experience. And for nearly a decade, he coordinated Nova Scotia's Black History Month celebrations. Among his current projects is a national tour for a curated exhibition of African Nova Scotian quilts, The Secret Code, which will be featured at galleries across the country and including here at Dalhousie through the end of 2024. Mr. Woods is a past recipient of the Nova Scotia Poetry Award and the George Eliot Clark Literary Award and in 2017 received the prestigious Harry Jerome Award for Arts and Entertainment. But so much of Mr. Wood's life and career have also been spent opening doors for others. As associate creator of the Nova Scotia Art Gallery, he mounted the first ever exhibit on African Canadian visual art. He has founded many long standing arts and cultural projects, including the Black Artists Network of Nova Scotia, the New Brunswick Black Artists Alliance and the Cultural Awareness Youth Group of Nova Scotia. Through his research, Mr. Woods has also sought to shine a spotlight on undertold stories of the African-Canadian experience. One of his current passion projects is the excavation and exhibition of the work of New Brunswick-born landscape painter Edward Mitchell Bannister, the first artist of African descent to win a major art prize in North America. And when legal scholar Constance Backhouse sought to write about civil rights pioneer Viola Desmond in her book on racism in Canada, Mr. Woods served as lead researcher and subsequently became one of the greatest champions of Desmond's story. Desmond's sister, Wanda Robson, wrote a letter of support for Mr. Woods for this honorary degree prior to her passing earlier this year. She credited Mr. Woods with helping bring her sister's story to the world, adding that David's mission is to never cease to portray his people to be treated with respect, dignity, and equality. In recognition of his immeasurable contributions to artistic life in Nova Scotia, and for his efforts to share voices and stories of the African Nova Scotia experience, I ask you, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, in the name of the Senate, to bestow upon Mr. David Ainsley Woods the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. David Ansley Woods, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in Dalhousie University, 
I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations, Dr. Wood. Congratulations once again, Dr. David Woods. It is my pleasure now, ladies and gentlemen, to invite our newly inducted honorary doctorate, Dr. David Woods, to present the convocation address. Thank you again, faculty, graduates, family, for this honor and on your achievements. A mental block experienced while in my first year at Dalhousie University led to be becoming all that I am today, an artist, curator, storyteller, one of the main documenters of African Nova Scotian experience and winners of awards in several art disciplines and career endeavors across Canada. I entered Dow from Dartmouth High across the bridge, armed with a few university entrance bursaries. I registered for political science with intent, at least the stated intent, of going to Dow Law School and eventually pursuing a career in law. In my first year, I ran successfully for the student council and became the first year arts rep. Besides my regular courses, I audited classes in black history and black culture at the university's transition year program, which is a program aimed at assisting blacks and indigenous students from across Nova Scotia to receive edu or university education. The very first paper I was assigned in Sociology 100, I submitted two weeks late, and it clocked in at 110 pages. <laughs> when I finally handed in, I remembered my shocked professor looking at me and saying that I had submitted an essay that was the length of an MA thesis, <laughs> rather than the 10 double space pages he had asked me for. <laughs> this first paper was a sign of much problems to come. <laughs> My term papers for English, sociology, political science kept getting longer and more elaborate. I remember obsessing over every word and nuance of thought and try as hard as I could, I could not avoid creating these voluminous treatises. I was more concerned about capturing the full nuances of my thoughts on the subject matters that I was engaged in than in completing the projects. By January of the first year, the anxiety of overwriting and continuous lateness of my essays overwhelmed me, and I shut down. I would put pen to paper, but nothing would come. Frustrated, and having no one to discuss this with, I stayed away from my classes, hiding in shame. During this time of uncertainty, strangely enough, I suddenly turned to creative expression. These were works of the imagination drawn from my youth, from a summer camp that I had worked in the summer before college, where I had met and fell in love with all the children and people in Preston, the black community on the outskirts of Dartmouth, 
works that examined my life, questioned my future, explored my personal and racial history. And there was no anxiety or blockage in these things. They came, they became part of my daily routine of mixed expression and added to some formal studies of various art forms from books which I borrowed from the Killam Library. And hundreds of these works poured out of me. Poems, short stories, plots for plays. As a final term progress to its close, the realization that if I did not return to my classes, I would actually fail the year dawned on me. And I also felt at that time it would probably end my law school dream, which I believed I required being a perfect A student during my study career. And so about after six weeks of absence, I went back to my classes not so much to continue my studies, but to explain to my professors why I had disappeared. My first confession was to Professor Donald Clement of Sociology Department. And after my confession, he looked at me and said casually, you got writer's block, <laughs> which I knew nothing about. <laughs> And he explained to me that it was a condition, a condition that sometimes affected overly driven students. He then stated that I could present my papers and do my exams orally. A second confessional to Professor Cowan, my English professor, resulted in the same assessment and another offer of oral papers and exams. I returned to my room on Birmingham Street after a day of meeting with my professors and broke into tears. Elated that there was nothing permanently wrong with me and also inspired that I had obtained support of my teachers. As I looked about my room at the artwork that I had so voraciously created in the last six weeks, I perhaps had a glimpse of these things and took them seriously for the, same, for, for the first time. I felt elated that I had had this outburst because it had dug up long repressed subjects of my life, long repressed feelings. And for the first time, I felt they were in fact divine, that they were rebellion against a conventional path that I had chosen to pursue, but which was not truly of my spirit. In my elation, I wrote a poem that, lately, that later would become a personal anthem. It's called Discovery. I am inside something beautiful. I look from his eyes, feel the vast areas of his strength, see the horizons of his possibilities. A human thing, once beaten into outcast dungeons, where the self was made to feel inhuman, where ugliness was twisted into the soul until, like a tree, I stood in my own roots and pushed towards the sun. It was a beautiful feeling, a beautiful light glowing in a midnight forest. It moved like a magician into the dark chambers of my heart. I was born in Trinidad, West Indies, to a family of descendants of enslaved Africans brought to the island to work the cocoa and cane plantations of that colony that had alternatively been conquered by the Spanish, French, and British. At age four, my parents migrated to England to pursue professions in nursing and law, respectively. And, and I grew up in a village, and I was then sent to a, a village with my four siblings to live with my grandparents. This was an extended household, as my aunt and uncle had also migrated to the United States and left their five children. Altogether, there were 17 people in the house. I grew up extremely poor and completely ignored. I did well in school, and so that became my identity. I had an Uncle Willie who took a liking to me and was impressed at my performance in school, my intellectual inquisitiveness, and he used to buy me books. But these were books, well, these were works of literature, the classics. These were works that talked about the different places in the world, of great men and women of civilization. These were books that were books of art they were very advanced for my age, seven and eight. He seemed to have read something in my quietness and my solitude 
and my intellectual inquisitiveness and provided me with a library of works that spoke to my innermost interests, a sort of a silent psychologist. When I was reunited with my parents in Canada, it was a disaster. It was a lot of abuse. Again, I did well in school and was known for that, but emotionally, I was starved. I kept my spirit at home by waiting till everyone slept at night, and then I would get up and write and paint till the early morning light, exploring the world and my imagination. So this reaction in college to my first year had a precedent. And I think it was also because when I approached university, I approached it as something that would be all-consuming and without balance and only concentrated on my academics. Over the summer, I reflected on the insights of my first year and looked at the body of writings and artwork that I had given life. I believed I could return to my previous career ambitions and again pursue my law school dreams. However, when that anxiety and overwriting reoccurred in the second year, I was no longer interested in undergoing that torture and I bolted to another life. Coincidentally, at the time, a job for the cultural program coordinator appeared at the Black United Front, a community development agency in Nova Scotia that was charged with developing the black communities across the province. The job required someone to design and present cultural programs to teach black culture and history to black children who had grown up in non-black foster homes and had been estranged from their own culture. During the interview, I convinced the interviewers that it was not only black youth in foster homes that were ignorant of their history and culture, but that all black youth in general at that time did not know much about their history and culture. It was not something that was taught in the schools. It was not something that was systematically available in institutions such as libraries and museums and art galleries. So instead of a focus of, on only children in foster homes, I argued for a program based in the schools where the widest possible population of black children could be reached. I got the job, and weeks later, I headed out to try and convince the principals in the local schools and the students to buy into my new cultural project idea. Where I received permission, I would organize a youth group and, and, and who met at noon or right after school, and I taught a curriculum of black history and culture. In addition to learning about black history and culture, the participants were challenged to become leaders, and they organized provincial conferences, and they, and they acted in plays, and they organized Black History Month events in their schools for the first time. They competed in history quizzes to learn more about their history, and in debate tournaments to sharpen their minds in political thinking. The groups flourished. In 1985, the, the group was awarded the Commonwealth Youth Service Award, recognizing it as one of the most in, innovative leadership, youth leadership groups in the whole Commonwealth and we were also given an international scholarship. By the end of the second year of this program, the program was discontinued by the Black United Front. But the students' participants refused to accept the discontinuation of a program that they had loved so well and begged me to try and save it by seeking another sponsor. In the end, and with the assistance of the Halifax North Branch Library and the Department of Secretary of State, I created an independent society called the Cultural Awareness Youth Group of Nova Scotia. In a sense, creating CAYG was very much like me creating all the artwork that I did in my first year. Because in those youths, their ambitions that had been blocked had found its expression in all the activities that they were now doing. Many of the participants in the group went on to become the who's who of, black, of the leadership in the black community today. They include several government officials, judges, lawyers, school principals, and university professors in their ranks, including Barbara Hamilton, who's sitting over there. <laughs> and Karen Hudson, who's a principal at Auburn High School.
In 1987, I moved to try and explore my creative talent in a greater way. I left the Culture Awareness Youth Group to focus on a writing career, and I formed a theater company called Voices Theater and began writing plays. These were stories of individuals and events that I had learned about in my travels across Nova Scotia that had been ignored by history. The story of Dorothy Paris, a black woman from New Glasgow, Nova Scotia, who had been hired by the Quaker Oats Company in the 1940s to portray the character Aunt Jemima. The story of Africville, a community destroyed by the city of Halifax after a century of neglect and abuse by the city, including placing the city dump next to the community. The story of George and John Maxwell of Judique K. Breton, twin brothers who worked on the fishing schooners on the Grand Banks, and in the late 1800s, one of them, uh, one of them appeared in the famed novel Captain's Courageous by Rudyard Kipling. It was also about Viola Desmond, a woman who, a businesswoman who, in 1946, was arrested at the Roseland Theater in New Glasgow for sitting in the whites only section of the theater, and later on became the first black, the first Canadian female featured in our banknotes. Beginning in 1991 and over the next decade, several of my plays were selected as features for CBC Radio and were broadcast nationally. In 1990, I published a book, Native Song, a collection of poetry and paintings, ironically, the works that had been created for after the, my, from the first year Dalhousie breakdown. The book was a runaway hit for a collection of poetry. I sold 300 the very opening night, the very open, um, at the launch of the book, and it was also nominated for the Dartmouth Book Award. The following year, I received a call from a professor at Dalhousie University who invited me to speak to his class. My book was part of the first year English curriculum. In 1996, after listening to my play on Africville, called Once, Africville Stories, noted Canadian jazz composer and band leader Joe Seeley, Seeley contacted me. He had, moved, he had been moved by my words and characters and wanted to include some of my words in his new recording on Africville. After he also found out that I painted, he asked me to also do the CD cover. He won the Juno for that, that recording, Africville Suite, in 1997, Best Contemporary Jazz Recording. And his work is considered a Canadian classic. In 1998, I was asked to present a small exhibition of African Nova Scotian art at the Anna Leon Owens Gallery at Nova Scotia College of Art. Because there had never previously been any exhibitions of African Nova Scotian art, I decided, while I had the chance, to do some research in the black communities and went door to door to the 30 black communities looking for art. The exhibition ended up showing over 150 pieces of work and representing over 150 years of African Nova Scotian art making that had not been previously known. It broke attendance records at the Anna Leon Owens Gallery at the time. In 1996, I met Wanda Robson at, law school, at a law school symposium at Dalhousie. She was the youngest sibling of Viola Desmond. She had been living in North Sydney and lost touch with her community. She was a great storyteller, and I encouraged her to begin telling the story of her sister's life and her arrest in New Glasgow. I also encouraged her to begin storytelling. In 2010, Viola, Viola Desmond largely fueled by Wanda's storytelling and by Wanda's advocacy, was given a free royal pardon and eventually was selected to be on our Canadian $10 bill. And there are many more stories. In the 1990s, I discovered Dr. Clement Ligore, a Trinidad-born physician who, in, who opened a private hospital in the North End Halifax in 1917 and was a hero of the 1917 Halifax explosion saving hundreds of lives. I learned last year that they actually created a new award for, in his honor, um, the Dr. Clement Ligore Award, which, which was given to Dr. Strang. I also discovered Edward Mitchell Bannister, the first African person of African descent to win a major prize in North America, 
the Centennial Medal in 1865. He was born in St. Andrews, New Brunswick, and was completely unknown in Canada. All of these stories had a consistent theme of an individual or an event of significance that had been ignored by history and by, the, and by, and by an accident had been brought to my attention. And through my passion and commitment to create an excellent work, I was allowed to become a conduit for their public recognition to give them a second life. And each time I became successful, lifting up a new hero experience, I again thought of my first year here at Dalhousie, when I too discovered my second life. So I want to thank my breakdown at Dalhousie, which ushered my second life. I want to thank my professors, Professor Cohen, TYP instructors Rocky Jones and Fred Ward, whom later became mentors. I want to thank the Killam Library, whose many rows of books I, I hunted and, and studied various forms of, of subject matter and different art forms. The Dow Theater Department, who ended up building sets from several of my plays and this very stage at the Dalhousie Arts Center where I presented several of my plays. And now I want to thank the department. I want to thank Dalhousie and the Faculty of Arts and Social, Scientists, uh, Social Sciences for this very special honor in my own hometown. I also want to thank, that, also want to thank Dr. Fua Cooper, Department of Sociology, who was a sponsor of, my, uh, of this award and my referee references, Professor Barbara Hamilton of Health and Sciences, Karen Hudson, principal at Auburn High School, and Wanda, and the late Wanda Robson, 1925 to 1922, to 2022. My beloved friend and storytelling partner, who was actually a house matron for Dow back in the 1970s and lived on Henry Street. And I am grateful for this honor, both for myself as well as for the validation that it gives to all who are still locked in themselves, awaiting an opportunity to enter a more full life. I have arrived at mine a bit circuitously, but it has allowed me to complete my defining poem of discovery, which I first began in 1977. And the completion of that poem is like this. It is human love I dream inside, a beautiful palace trivialized as mere words or irrelevant feeling, but it contains all of my meaning. And as the sun enters into this dark place where I was enslaved, discovers me a sleeping child, cold, trembling, and waiting, understands my pain and stretches its rays. As the sun is love, it nourishes the thing inside me, and I sprout forth with so much beauty even the sun screams. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Woods. Much like the experience and the amazement of that first year sociology prof staring down at a 110 page first year sociology <laughs> essay, uh, I want to thank you on behalf of the students, the family and friends, and the, um, the uh, platform party for that beautiful and inspiring convocation address that from my perspective, I'm sure many on the stage surpasses many of the most poignant and brilliant convocation addresses I've certainly experienced. So I wanna thank you for that and I wanna thank you for your uh, incredible contributions to African Nova Scotian history and to black Canadian history. <laughs> Thank you.
Graduates, let me be the first to acknowledge that as you leave the auditorium today, you will officially become part of Dalhousie's alumni network of over 155,000 people around the world. This is a tremendous asset, and I hope you take advantage of the connections to the wider and broader Dal community. We invite you to get involved. We invite you to stay involved. In recognition of your new status, members of the Alumni Association will present you with an alumni pin on your way out of the, uh, the uh, ceremony today, and, and we hope you wear it uh, with, with pride. Congratulations again. Welcome to the Dalhousie alumni family, graduates, and guests. The business of convocation is concluded. After the singing of O Canada, if you are able, you are requested to remain standing as the academic procession leaves the auditorium. I now invite Sharice Pohl, a Dalhousie voice student in the Fountain School of Performing Arts, in the singing of our national anthem. Thank you.